CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Arlington uh, Redevelopment Board. Tonight is August 5th, 2024. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the board. Uh, could I ask the other members of the board to please introduce themselves? Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shana Corman Houston. Ken Lau. And we also have uh, Sarah Suarez, the assistant director for the Department of Planning and Community Development, joining us this evening. Thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and move right into our first agenda item this evening, which is a review of the meeting minutes from July 15th, 2024. Pull those up. And I will see first if there are any uh, additions or corrections, starting with Steve. Um, well, there, we probably should have a discussion about one sentence in the second paragraph of agenda item two. Um, yeah. Sure. But you know, the, the sentence in particular was, uh, it's the second from the last in the paragraph. Uh, that was essentially the same unit that he had initially proposed to the board, but that he got information that they didn't need to do that. Um, I had suggested to uh, staff uh, to strike everything after the, the comma, but I'm aware that two other board members, um, I, 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 well, the staff member who I submitted the suggestion to told me that other board members had made other suggestions and we should probably talk about Sure. Can you just um, uh, one more time point out exactly where that is? I have the, um, the document open, and I just want to make sure that okay. everyone can find that. So this is under agenda item two. Uh, it is the second paragraph and the second to last sentence. That was essentially the same unit that he had initially proposed to the board, but then he got information that they didn't need to do that. Uh, Right, so um, it's not exactly <laughs> what we talked about then. It was um, that I think we should really just strike the in entire sentence because I think it um, kind of mis misidentifies, and I think elsewhere we cover that item, which was basically um, that he had proposed units on the first floor. The board had identified that they would prefer um, fully commercial space on the first floor. Um, so I, again, I, I, I don't know that we need that sentence in there to communicate what is elsewhere being com uh, communicated in that in that paragraph, but uh, I'll see what other people think. Jean? I like the sentence as it now exists because I think but I'm fine to get rid of the sentence too. I just want okay. to say that. But I think, you know, what the minutes need to do is paraphrase what a person said yep. on the essence. And I think this gets at the essence. I think he was mistaken, but that's what he actually said. Right. So um, I think this is a good paraphrase. But if the other members would leave out the sentence, I would be fine with omitting it also. Ken? I can go either way. Okay. Um, I do agree with Gene. I mean, it's it's what he said. Okay. We could, again. But. I think I think it's a little. Um, I think it isn't quite what he said um, because he, if I recall, he went a little bit further into the fact um, that he went more into the to the discussion, I believe, around uh, commercial versus residential, if I recall correctly. Um, but we can, we can certainly keep the paragraph or the uh, paraphrased sentence in, if that's yeah, because, what people I mean, prefer. The minutes aren't supposed to be the transcript. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So I think it's OK. But if others would prefer to omit the sentence, I'm fine with that. Shana? Yeah. I do not have a strong feeling. Okay. Okay. Steve, you're fine I, leaving I it in? Hate, but, you know, I, I will, of course, defer that that predates my time on the board, so I will defer to those who were, um, who were members at that time. 
Okay. Um, again, I think, to your point, Gene, he was mistaken <laughs> in this. And I think that the clarification around um, uh, the fact that he was mentioning that it was the, the same residential unit that he had initially proposed to the board um, before, yeah, the whole sentence doesn't work for me. So do you propose to omit it or just do what Steve suggested and end the sentence after the word board? I would, I would, I would be comfortable with, um, as Steve suggested, eliminating the section after the word board. I'm fine with that too. Okay. Yep. Any other modifications, Steve? No, nothing okay. here. Okay. No. Jean? No. Shana? No. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda item from July 15th? 2024 as amended. So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Uh, Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved as amended. That closes agenda item number one. We'll now move to agenda item number two, which is the public hearing for docket number 3810 at 149 Pleasant Street. Um, what we'll do this evening is uh, I'll first um, ask uh, Assistant Director Sarah Suarez to uh, uh, present the, uh, the overview of the public hearing information to the board. We'll then open it up to the applicant who I believe is, is here with us this evening um, to uh, make a, up to a 10 minute presentation to the board. Uh, members of the board will then um, we'll run through the board to see if we have any questions, initial thoughts, for you, uh, we'll open it up for public comment, and then we'll come back to the board where we'll have a discussion and decide whether or not uh, this is something we can vote on this evening. And if not, we'll talk about what the next steps will be. So that will be how we'll proceed this evening. Uh, so Sarah, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, so the application before you tonight is um, a proposal to demolish an existing single family house on a corner lot located at 149 Pleasant Street. Um, in order to construct a new three-family residential building in an R4 townhouse zoning district. Um, this project is before the board tonight because the property is located on Pleasant Street, um, which requires redevelopment board approval. And the applicant is also requesting a special permit to allow a three-family um, residential building. So in order to demolish um, the project, um, they were, the applicant was required to go before the historic commi um, district commission to get approval of the application. Um, and it was determined that they met the requirements. They were um, signed off for at the redevelopment board, um, excuse me, at the historic district commission. Um, the applicant is proposing to relocate the existing driveway and curb cut on Pleasant Street and add a second driveway and curb cut on Gray Street in order to provide parking for a total of six vehicles. Um, the applicant is seeking relief from several, uh, or several bylaws, including um, the proposal to allow two separate driveways. Um, they're also seeking relief in order to allow parking within the front yard setback from Gray Street for both the upper and lower driveways um, due to extreme site conditions. Um, and they're also seeking relief in order to, um, related to their usable open space requirements given that there is a strong grade on the property. Um, the application while it's a three-family proposal in an R4 district, it is consistent with um, what would normally go there. Um, there's the single-family home that's there right now is in need of major, major repair, um, and the applicant is here to present further. Great. Thank you so much for the overview. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will uh, now turn it over to the applicants. If you have more than one, um, I'm not sure who you will have come up to I'm, speak. I'm the architect. This is the client, Jim Mackey, and this gentleman here is uh, 
Matt, the Matt Hammer with uh, Lamplex Engineering and Surveying uh, Low Mass. Great, fantastic. So the three of us, I think, will be able to answer various questions that you may pose okay. to us. So. Great. Uh, would you? Is there anything that you'd like to um, present to the board, or would you like us to jump right in with the materials? Well, I have, have a little bit of a narrative here. That's that great. Here. If I if I could ask you if you wouldn't mind coming up to. Um, <laughs> to our table here so that we can catch you on the mic. Okay. And I'll ask too, um, once we get into the public comment portion of the evening, um, anyone who is uh, requesting to speak this evening will do the same again so that we can make sure to uh, catch you on the, on the mic uh, because we are recording this evening. Okay. So I will be repeating a few of the things that uh, Sarah mentioned. So um, um, I'm uh, saying that we appear before you today to request the granting of special permits under Section 3.4 Environmental Design Review, which will allow the de demolition of a single family house at 149 Pleasant Street and the construction of a new multi family house in its place. The first special permit request is to allow the construction of a three family house in an R4 uh, townhouse district. This is an allowable use in an R4 <coughs> district via special permit per 5.43 use regulations for residential districts of the zoning bylaw. There will be two side-by-side -side units on the upper floors and one accessible unit on the ground floor. Uh, as the property is in the historic street, is in the Pleasant Street Historic District, we chose a design that looks like a single family house in the Italian Renaissance Revival style. Popular between 1890 and 1930, there are several houses in the neighborhood, including an adjacent one on Gray Street. The design has been deemed an asset to the town by the Arlington Historic District Commission and has been approved by them. The second and third special permit requests are regarding the number of driveways and the location of parking spaces. Bore you with quoting chapter and verse, I guess. Um, so we are requesting two driveways, one from uh, Pleasant Street, which I refer to as the lower one in the parking as well, and then the upper one from Gray Street. Uh, these two separate uh, driveways and parking areas reduce the number of vehicles in any one place on the property, reducing congestion, uh, both visit visibly and physically, which is a benefit to the neighborhood. The lower drive serves the ground level accessible unit and has a turnaround so that cars can pull directly out of the driveway into traffic instead of backing out into it on Pleasant Street, thus reducing congestion and increasing the visibility of pedestrians. Um, and uh, we do not comply with open space usable, nor does the house now. Um, and there was a question um, in the memorandum about um, the distance between the driveway and the intersection. So the driveway edge on Pleasant Street is 26 feet 4 inches from the intersection, and the driveway edge on Gray Street is 57 feet 7 inches from the intersection, approximately. So both are in excess of the 20-foot minimum. Um, and then the uh, other issue that was raised has to do uh, with the uh, buffer, the vegetation buffer. And um, the one that that affects is the property uh, that is on Gray Street. And so um, I just okay. I'm sorry. Um, so that this is this is our house here, and you can see the distance between the affected house, and um, the you'll see on our site plans that, that the parking that we're proposing is right up here, so that there really isn't. Uh, room for a buffer except for a fence. There is, however, uh, vegetation all across here, including some big pine trees and so on. So 
there is something that exists. Thank you, and I will pass this around, and I would ask if you wouldn't mind if you could follow up with an email of this exhibit that of you're course. sharing with us. Of course, uh, With um, yeah. the department. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. Pass this down, this is the site. That's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Shall I return to my seat? Um, we probably will have questions for okay. you, so I think that's a um, determination as to whether you'd like to answer those or you know defer to your yes. colleagues. Um, so we will uh, start. Why don't we start with um, Ken for any any questions you might have for the applicant? And we'll reserve any questions, initial comments. We'll reserve discussion for after open public comment. Okay. Uh, well, I'd like to start off with saying. Uh, Thank you very much. This is a very complete oh. and thorough uh, package you submitted. Thank you. And it's very refreshing that uh, we got what we have here today. Uh, I think a lot of other uh, people could learn from this. Um, but let me go over some of the questions that I have, okay? Yes. Uh, I'll start off the first one with, me, with your. Uh, civil engineer. Uh, I know Gray Street is a, it's a pretty steep hill where you have that driveway and the driveway is facing down. Uh, on the curb cut where the gutter line is, is there water going to come down that down Gray Street and take a left right into your driveway and create a little pool down there at the end of the driveway? Or can we to do some sort of trench drain up there? or? Um, or something to intervene, or is there enough of a hump to prevent that? I'm not a civil engineer, I just from experience. Um, yeah, for the record, uh, Matt Hammer with Landplex Engineering and Surveying. So there will be a gutter line, so that water going down Gray Street will continue to by, go by the driveway. Um, there is a trench drain at the bottom of the driveway to facilitate that drainage, but the, the runoff from Gray Street will not be coming onto the property. So you feel comfortable enough that there is enough of a, a, yes. of a hump or a difference there, and not to the point where when you come out, uh, the cars will, uh, will bottom out? There will be a, a berm there. Yeah, but will the cars, because of, see, it goes both ways. If you get too much of a hump there, then the cars come out, bottom out or bottom out when they go down the driveway. But if there's not enough of a bump there. There will be a bump there. And cars won't bump, uh, won't bottom out there? Depending on the type of car. Uh, but an average car will not uh, have any problem navigating that small berm to get into the driveway. Uh, if you were to put a trench drain and have the water come down the driveway, a trench drain would not facilitate the drainage necessarily. In order to take the runoff on the road, I'm not saying, but I just, I'm just I'm the full engineer, engineer, so I'm I'm not I'm not going to play. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to engineer it for you. I'm just okay. saying okay. I see that as an issue, and we uh, don't feel as though that that's going to be an issue. Okay. Um, one of my other questions uh, is for the architect. Uh, I looked at your plans here, and. Um, what do you plan uh, for um, a mechanical space? Uh, how do you how do you plan to heat cool? That's a question for the um, client contractor. What's the question, sir? About heating and cooling. He told me. Well, you have no space allotted for it anywhere on any of your floor plans. There's no. That's that's not so on the um, uh, ground level plan. There is a, there's a utility closet there. Yes. So that would be... Uh, and that serves all three units? No, no, that's for that unit there. But otherwise, it's on the third floor. It isn't designated anywhere, but uh, that's what I was planning on the third floor. The space inside, sir, where we can alter some closets to put the air handles and such either in the attic or in the first floor closet. Um, and the exterior condensers will be outside. Okay, that's one. Okay, so you're gonna have, you're gonna have condensers outside? On the ground, correct. Where? Uh, to be determined. 
Well, It'll probably be in the back under the deck area where they can breathe properly and be covered. We didn't show that on the plans. We normally don't do that. We normally ask. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh. It, it affects the neighborhood, okay? Sure. sure. All right, so if you look at the ground floor plan, it's, it will be to the left of the office and to the right of the handicapped bathroom? Um, well, that's underground, so it's better if you uh, go back and um, Well, it's underneath the deck. That's what you said. Yep, but this is built into the into the ground. So the uh, if, if you look at thirty-five at uh, thirty-five of one twenty-four, sheet thirty-five. Uh, I apologize, but my sheets don't have those kind of numbers on it. Oh. Well, it's just tell me what floor. It's a site plan. Well, the site plan. Yes, but it's not the engineered one. It says proposed site plan. Yep, it's the colored one. Yes. Okay. So you can see where it says permeable wood deck. Yes. Yeah. So it goes underneath that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, so that's... I have so, a plan I could show you. A site plan. Yeah, so that's what I said earlier. It's going to be just to the left and to the right of the office and... Uh, yes. Correct. I don't have the plans in front of me, but on the interior, that can be tweaked somewhat. So air handles inside based on the design that uh, so those would be in the rear of the building all right I just, I just want to know where they are That's okay, okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean it's not going to be on the corner of the block somewhere on the side here no, okay. no we try to hide them for aesthetics and this is all electric or is there any gas or um, be gas it would be gas yes, sir. so these are the high efficiency ones where It'll be uh, side vented then, you know, you don't require a chimney? Uh, no, it, we have to have a HERS rating once the systems are designed for, for the units, but uh, it'll be no, high efficiency. Well, let, me, let me rephrase it again, okay? Do you require a chimney no. for any of your mechanical equipment? No, sir. Because you don't show any chimneys on, on any of your elevations? There are none. Okay. So the, there'll be no chimneys. And so right. what, you, what you show is what you get. Fair enough. They'll just be an exhaust vent. Which yeah, it'll be direct vented out. Okay. Uh, and then if we go to your elevations. Uh, uh, actually, if you go to your section, uh, thank you for showing that. I like that uh, little section with little details on there. The, uh, well, the wall section? Yeah. Is, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not saying you have to do this. I, I'm just um, stating this as a request. I think it would look nicer if the freeze board was a little bigger. Right now you have is it four inches. I think if you want. It's typical of that uh, period of house. Okay. The uh, the deeper ones are are, are different. Okay. So, yeah. And then that's just a request. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also the transition between your stucco and your foundation, brick veneer. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like, do you need a water table there? No, that's also inappropriate. Okay, so how are you going to make that transition then? Is it going to be some sort of uh, uh, flashing or some sort of reveal? Or how do you get that edge in? There'll be an overhang. Mm -hmm. Like a standard house has an overhang from the foundation. I uh, see. That's, I'm, that's what I was a little confused because you're saying it's a foundation wall with a brick veneer. So you're gonna you're gonna cast in place concrete wall. I'm assuming some sort of airspace in a brick veneer, right? Uh, is it gonna be full brick? No, no. It, it, it's the stick on bricks. It's not it's a the true veneer. Type. So so it's, the, so it's the thin brick. Correct. That's what historical wanted. I had really no control over that. This is just questions. I'm, sure. not, I'm not telling you how to do anything. Yeah. No. I'm just questioning it. I'm just questioning how you can make that transition between. So the we'll, when, when the house is being framed, we'll leave a reveal of, you know, an inch or two overhang, which. So the frame will overhang the foundation a little bit. So you get so you get a little bit of a drip. Correct. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I 
think that's all I want to uh, say for now. Great. Can I come back if I have any? Absolutely. Uh, I just want to reserve the right to ask more questions later. Yes, I want to see what the rest of my board members think about this. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Shana. Um, <clears throat> so there were just a couple of things I wanted to ask about to start off with. Um, and, and one was I wanted to go back to systems, to heating and cooling. Uh, did you did you say you're planning on gas um, uh, gas heating and cooling systems? Yes. Okay. Um, so so Arlington Arlington has entered the fossil fuel pilot ban. Um, so so take a look at that code and make sure that what you're doing is a, I'm not I'm not saying it is or is not. Just take a look and make sure yeah. that whatever you're we haven't got that far lot. yet to design mm -hmm. the systems. Yep. Uh, once we get through the process, the HERS rate is. Yep. Um, we'll calculate all that. Okay. And design accordingly. Okay. Um, okay. There, uh, there are new restrictions on, yeah, on always coming the up. ability. That's right. well, right. How do people right. think electricity is generated? Again, this is not, <laughs> this is something new that's gone that's into effect in Arlington since then. Right. It went into effect in, in May. Uh, that's right. This board has no control over it, so okay. it's just something that you need to be aware of that there is a fossil free fuel fossil fuel free program that Arlington is involved in, and that affects new construction. So, and when I apply for the permits, the building inspector will regulate all that. Correct. Tell that is not regulated by this board. Shane is just. It's an FYI for you to look into to see whether or not you um, need to comply with that. Sure, we'll have to, yes. 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 So, so as you think about compressors and citing compressors and selecting compressors and, and where are you and showing us what compressors you're using, make sure that you're, cho you're choosing compressors for the equipment you actually want, intend to use. Um, uh, Solar was another question I had. Um, do you know if uh, you will be required to have solar on your roof? Um, Who makes that determination? We'll yes. we'll go through that. Yes. Yep. So that because that is part of the bylaw. Yes. We felt that, um, given the nature of the kind of roof that there is, and the, and you know that it, it's. Yep. Um, not really amenable to it. Yep. That historic district commission is not there to know. Understood. So, <coughs> so um, that was. We'll have it. Yeah, that'll be one of the discussion points. We'll um, go through with mm -hmm. the board. Yep. And, and then I was I was wondering about the two driveways as well. Um, were you? Um, uh, how did you how did you come to the two driveways? Um, well, because of the accessible unit on the um, ground floor mm -hmm. and the difficulty of uh, access from Pleasant Street, mm -hmm. um, it just was logical. It was just common sense safety. to uh, yeah safety to to divide them into two uh, separate access points and given that um, it's not like they're right next to each other mm -hmm. one is upper on gray and the other is lower on Pleasant Street it um, I think it's a re very reasonable thing to do. Okay. And um, had you looked at any configurations that that might um, have just one driveway or just one curb cut? Um, Yes, it, it, you know, given the nature of the site, um, it it's 17 feet mm -hmm. from the highest point to the lowest point, and it it just didn't make sense. I did look at different things, and this is what was um, the most reasonable for common sense and for um, how it served each unit. I mean, if we have an accessible unit on that has that's on the the lowest level. It makes sense to come in that way from Pleasant Street, but to have parking for everybody down there, well, that's a recipe for disaster. 
really, you Why? know. Because well, of people having wait, uh, because excuse me, we'll, we'll, we'll um, take yeah. questions from the uh, right. from the public Same. later. Yeah, in, in terms of all of those cars, you know, backing out onto Pleasant Street or having a huge turnaround or just a big parking area. I mean, who wants that? Mm -hmm. You know, so it just on so many levels, it just made sense to to separate it out. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and and um, and then talk to me a little bit about usable open space. You said there wasn't any now. Um, oh yeah, that, that I mean because of the bit? because of the steepness. I mean, yep. to, in fact, I, I think it's if I can just speak out of turn a little bit. I think it's nonsense to require in a hilly town like Arlington, you know less than eight percent it's like where did that come from you know it's just yeah so so i have i i have walked the site i i know i know how hilly it is um uh i am trying to envision the new the the new front yard um uh the new sort of entry off pleasant street mm -hmm. um, now as as you know Currently, there is. It's certainly hilly, but there, it's. It is. Um, uh, one could theoretically put a chair out there, or a table out there, and have have it be usable open space, um, and not meet the definition of usable open space. And I'm I'm wondering um, if you can sort of describe. Well. Actually, what it's going to look like? I, I, how you envision how, the how fully envisioning of the art? Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, you know, there's both the uh, request to not push the earth around very much, um, and then this this requirement. So as it stands now, um, the the flattest area, so to speak is um, unpleasant uh, to, if you're facing the house to the right there, you know, so, um, and there are the trees there that are very pleasant, you know, so that in theory you could, you know, yeah. as you say, sit up there. But, um, you know, people find a way to enjoy using common sense again, you know, people are going to enjoy the property, you know, they're, 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 they'll enjoy the property. <laughs> I, I am not criticizing, I'm not questioning yeah. whether people would enjoy the property. I'm, I was simply asking. Yeah, yeah. The area that's open space now to the right and the back is going to stay the same, basically, mm -hmm. but it doesn't meet the criteria for the the, yeah. The gray, yeah. but that's all staying the same. Yeah, yeah, and the and open I space area. And and I I understand that the um, definition of usable open space and the functionality uh, are are potentially. Yeah, the are flashing out there. Is that indicative of a problem? Uh, that is a great question. Is that, that was happening, uh, happening the mouth last meeting? We have an electrical <laughs> issue apparently in the building, and we'll make sure that the facilities oh. are yes, aware of it. Thank you very much. Go ahead. So, no, uh, that's all I have for now. Thank Great. You. Thank you, Shana. Jean. Thanks. I, I have to start off by saying I think it's very nice that you're proposing multifamily oh. building there rather than a single family building since it is a place that can have up to four units. So I do appreciate that. And um, Jean, I, I'm just going to ask you to project so project. that everybody here this uh, evening sorry, can hear you because we have the HVAC noise. Thank you. I have a couple questions about trees. Have you met and spoken with the tree warden about no. your plan yet? Um, I think that's going to be essential for a couple of reasons. One is, it appears that the driver will require the removal of a street tree, probably a seven, eight, nine-year-old crabapple tree that's directly there. 
I'm not sure you're going to be able to make that work. You definitely will need to speak with the tree warden about that mm -hmm. because of the state law about uh, removal of street trees. Um, secondly, you're apparently proposing the removal of some trees in the setback under the town bylaw. You can't remove trees in the setback without the approval of the tree warden. Oh, okay. Also, so I think you need to meet with the tree warden um, for those two reasons, and I'd be very interested in whether that's going to change any of your plans or not. Um, secondly, I think you will re be required to plant one more tree on Gray Street. There is one small new tree on Gray Street partway down, uh -huh. but the rule is every 25 linear street feet there has to be a tree planted, and I think there's space for one. So you should take a look at that. Yeah, That's we need to check how close line. that gets to the intersection. Yeah, I think it's going to be fine. But yeah, it's worth looking at again. But you can review that with review the tree that okay. with the, okay. um, the town um, tree warden also. Um, and and there are rules about removing trees in the setback, things like that. So you will need to present him with mm -hmm. a plan for trees. Right. And I think we, I at least would like to see that mm -hmm. um, when you come back a second time, along with what the tree warden has said is acceptable. Um, you're proposing six parking spaces. That's right. Only three are required. I understand if, that. And, if, and if, I, I think that it's not reasonable. If, let's let Jeannie okay. finish his yeah. comment, please. Thank if you, you were going, to if you were going to have only three parking spaces, could you make this work with either one driveway or getting the parking out of the setback? I think you could, but I'd like you to take a look and see well, if you can do I, that. I'm, and I'll tell you why, because yeah, okay. because. To me, at least, it's one thing for us to consider making exceptions where you have to meet a minimum, but it's another thing for me for us to make exceptions where you're going beyond what's required by okay. the zoning bylaw. Well, so I, let, let me, question number one, if there were only three parking spaces, could you do this with one driveway? If I could, historical, one of the two driveways. It was quite a process to get through the historical. Let, I, that yeah. wasn't my question, okay. was it? Well, I could well, my question yeah. was. Well, first could, of all, could first you, of all, I want to say. I think I can that, answer that actually. Uh, oh, oh, let me speak. I object a lot to uh, to the one parking space per unit because people don't live that way. They just don't. I mean, it's wishful thinking that that. They do, but families don't live that way. What are guests supposed to do? Where are they supposed to park? You know, it, it's like that's a big thing. Regardless of how many cars, you know, people have, they have visitors. Where are they supposed to park if there are only three spots so, on the property? So I, I, I'm, I think I'm, it's a I'm, terrible try, thing. I'm trying to help you, okay? Because if there are only three spaces here, which are the required minimum, you can obviously have more, but that's the required minimum, then extra cars can park in the setback. But if you have more than three spaces, then you're running into a problem. So, one, so I would suggest you take a very oh. close look at that. Okay, um, let me, let, let me, no. No, not yet, I'm not please let him, please. Let so, the members of the board so finish. You, you can clearly you. do this with one driveway, and I wish you would have fessed up to it because you're putting four cars in the driveway that goes out onto Gray Street now. Okay. So, so, so we can't have parking up there for for the accessible unit. I mean, that's wrong. I mean, you know, common sense. You do not put a. Uh, 
a parking spot for somebody in an is, accessible is, unit or it's not accessible to are them. Are you required to have an accessible yes. parking? And which one of these parking spaces is accessible? It's not shown. Well, diagrams. the one that's right by the by the entrance to the unit. It needs to be articulated needs, on the plan. It needs to be shown ah. on the plan. Okay. And I'd like, and so that needs to be shown on the plan. It, it, it's adjacent to the entrance, so I thought that it would be. No, again, we need dimensions. It, it needs to be clearly articulated okay. as a handicap parking space. Uh, okay. Now explain again why you can't put a vegetative buffer between the parking on Gray Street and the because, next residential lot. Because it's just a small, uh, small space. It's just like it's a foot, and it's located where it is so that there is uh, the ability to walk around it, and um, and again because of. The, the sloping land it's built up and the access from those parking spots there is through the back of the house so that there's so so the house that's on gray street behind yeah. it is so so the handy the the, the the driveway to access no no it's the other drive I, I know but just let me walk through this this driveway is to access the lower unit, which is the um, uh, handicap accessible unit mm -hmm. itself. Up here, you wouldn't be able to have three cars up there because you wouldn't be able to have a car in front of another car that's from a different unit. That's one reason. The other reason would be is if you were to make this three wide, now you're going to have to stagger the actual curb cut itself and the curb cut's going to be wider than what's normally required in Arlington as well. There may be a good reason for this, but tell me why you just couldn't move this down a little bit and put a vegetative on it. Because of where the corner is relative to the house. So, so hold on. So there's a so wall here. Also. Okay. okay. You're talking about shifting this? Just a little bit to put in a vegetative buffer. Well, there's going to be a wall there to hold back the earth to the abutting problem. There's currently a fence there. Right. I know. Yeah. Okay. So. I so, thought you were talking about three parking spots. No, 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 no. I'm talking about moving this down a little bit so next to the wall of the vegetative buffer. Describe the wall. It's going to be a, um, a, a decorative retaining wall. How high? The um, wall is approximately two feet higher here to three feet higher in this location here above the adjacent property here. And up here it's two feet higher than the adjacent property here. And what's the wall made of? It's going to be like the, the T-block style retaining wall. Solid. Yeah, with a split face front. It's not a full um, structural retaining wall necessary either because it's only two feet high. Mm -hmm. But it's going to hold back the driveway the to this abutting property here. And then you have a wall here that wraps around the parking area. That's yeah. higher. Mm -hmm. This wall is six feet taller than the, or four feet higher than the grade here. And then over here, it ranges from at grade to two to three to four feet as you work your way here. Matt, Matt, per historical, they want a um, they want a stone face on that. Uh, con uh, uh, cord in place, concrete wall with stone face. Yeah. So I, I, I misspoke. So there's going to be a, a ported place concrete wall with a stone uh, veneer on it. Thank at, you. At her historical's request. Yes. Which way does the water flow on the property and the ground? Which way is the ground flow? The water right now mm -hmm. flows in this direction. 
and it also flows in this direction. But the, at the end of the driveway to the right is a catch, the water we captured there, sent the catch basin. So, so you're proposing trench drain here, the driveway, basically here? There's a trench drain, and then that water is then piped over to a drywall. Okay, so it is being piped over. Yes. yes. And we've done uh, confirmatory soil, soil testing mm -hmm. to ensure that the drainage will, will work. Mm -hmm. And there was a full stormwater report submitted with the um, yes. submittal as well. Can we, can, can we take a look at, at your um, lead checklist, check sheet that you put in? To be able to pull that up. Could I ask why there is an objection to the, uh, the two parking areas? What's the objection? Did I say I had an objection? She asked no questions. Why? He asked questions Just asked to question. you. Oh. We have not discussed whether or not that's an objection oh, for the okay. board. Okay. The, the all, of, all of these are questions to understand the project okay. and to yep, understand yep, yep. what's been reviewed and what hasn't been gotcha. reviewed. The, gotcha. the zoning bylaw says we can allow two parking right. driveways. Mm -hmm. We don't have to. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get an understanding mm -hmm. to help us make a decision about whether to allow the second driveway or mm -hmm. not. The lead checklist. That's in the uh, application. Right. So the yes, correct. The last page. Can we go to the? Great. Thank you. Thanks. Now, when I looked at this, it was all zeros. It wasn't filled in. I, um, well, maybe I've made a mistake because I was referring to um, another project that had submitted this exact this exact thing. That's oops. Oops, right, the rules, it's not completed. So we need one that's completed. I'm sorry. That's okay. And there also should be a narrative description if you look at the bylaw. So that needs to be completed. And there needs to be a narrative description that indicates how the lead performance objectives will be incorporated into the project. So, yeah, that needs to be fixed. I apologize. Um, I, I think I just printed out the wrong one. That happens. That's nice. That's easily fixed then. Right. Just want to follow up on what my colleague said about a solar system on the roof. It is required. There are about five or six exemptions in the bylaw. I don't know if you qualify for any of the exemptions, but you are required to file, along with this application, a separate document which you can find or get from planning that talks about what the solar system would be like or which exemption that you would need to meet. So that needs to be something that we'll need to see also. That's all I have at the moment. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Steve. Okay. Uh, good evening. So on the topic of solar systems, um, normally for a project under environmental design review, it is required, but there are exemptions. I believe the one that could apply here is in section 642C, um, and this, this exemption is for buildings in historic districts where the relevant 
Historic District Commission to deny the certificate of appropriateness or not applicability or hardship, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, my question is, well, when you were going, I, I know the District uh, Commission issued a certificate of appropriateness. Mm -hmm. Was there a discussion with solar energy systems? No. Then I have to because, because um, they routinely have denied yeah, they have. They have. I served on the board. I've been present when they have denied uh, because they haven't liked patterns uh, around uh, dormers. And um, there's been... Um, well, you'll have to go back to them if you want to get into them. Yeah, if, that, if that's the exemption, to Steve's right. point, if that's the exemption, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to come through with the easiest path, which is an exemption as mm -hmm. opposed to... Um, Right. The finding from the board, it would be to um, request a letter from mm -hmm. the Historic Commission okay. which identifies that they would okay. not approve okay. that and then we can easily follow yeah. that path. Yeah. Um, also in terms of, yes, uh, in terms of the shade tree every 25 feet, I, I actually came up with, that would be in this case I believe along both frontages, so I didn't count existing trees but there's, it would be, I believe we need seven of them. There are two existing front trees in the front. Okay. A pin oak on one side and a crab oak mm -hmm. on the other. And just one on the other. But it would be, um, I mean, it would be useful to have those indicated on a plan. Of course. Yeah. Um, I do appreciate the narrative uh, that your plans to use native species. Mm -hmm. um, I, when speaking with the tree warden, uh, you might discuss uh, species that will tolerate a higher range of hardiness zones because things mm -hmm. are getting warmer and those are moving north. and stick around for a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and other than that, uh, Madam Chair, I do uh, I, I do have some comments about parking, yes. um, which could be um, this this could be a challenge, but I would like to hold those until after the public comment. Um, Perfect. And usable open space as well. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. And I believe that my colleagues have. Um, Covered. I'm just going through my list here. All of the questions I have, except for um, the uh, pathway from the back of the driveway along Gray Street to the rear deck. Is that through the landscape yard? Are you planning on installing hardscaping there? I can, I can let them up there. So oh, we, we were talking about stepping stones. Stepping stones. Okay, so there will be a de delineated path. Correct. Okay, great. Okay, uh, do any of the other board members have any questions before I open the hearing up for public comment? Yes. yes. <coughs> uh, up on the attic floor, the third floor. Mm -hmm. uh, what what's that room for? I beg your pardon. What's what's uh, what? Third floor plan. Yep. You have a room there. Looks like, smells like a bedroom. Could but you be. don't have a label. Um. It can't be. Why not? Then you have four bedrooms. You have not. You could potentially have four cohabiting uh, people there, and it becomes a rooming house. If a family is there. I think so. Um. Uh, we took that definition out of the yeah, bylaw. Yeah, that, that so. was removed really? from the yeah, bylaw. So, yes. Yeah, the, the definition of family no longer carries a restriction on four unrelated uh, one of my adults. Favorites. Okay. <laughs> that one is. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Kim? No. Okay, great. So um, at this time, what I'd like to do is open the hearing uh, up for um, anyone from the public who has joined us this evening who would like to uh, make any comments about uh, the application. If I could um, ask you, we'll, we'll actually have uh, the folks who are, and I apologize for making you move back and, and forth, oh, okay. but if you wouldn't mind um, returning to your right. seat. And uh, anyone who does wish uh, to speak this evening, um, you will have up to three minutes to address the board. We will not answer questions. I will write down your questions uh, as we go. We will not address questions to the applicant. Again, we will, we will take all of the questions, and then when we return to discussion, we will aggregate them all and we will uh, work through them with the uh, applicants themselves. Um, when you come up to speak, I would uh, ask that you please introduce yourself by first, last name, and address, which we need for the uh, record this evening. 
Um, and again, uh, anyone who wishes to speak, please raise your hand and I'll call on you and invite you up. Please. So if you want me to sit over here. Please, thank you. Okay, well, my name is uh, Bertrand Halpern. I live at 11 Gray Street. We are the abutters uh, uphill on Grace, uh, on Gray Street. Um, I think our main concern is with the upper uh, driveway, which is very close to our property. My one question for the board is, is there, I thought there were rules about setbacks from, of a, of a driveway from the, from the nearest property, but uh, that, if that's not the case, then it's not the case. Uh, it's very close. It obviously will uh, impact us a bit. Uh, and uh, we are concerned about plants, uh, the fact that there's no space between them. Uh, uh, we would have liked to have seen more uh, uh, diagrams that we could actually see what, what it's going to look like. Uh, it's hard as an amateur to decipher the, the plans. Uh, uh, we had some question of whether it would be a fence on top of the, the wall and so forth. Um, and it would be nice to see just plan, I, uh, planning for the whole uh, uh, property and what, what it's going to look like uh, in terms of plantings and so forth. But uh, again, the thing that we're most concerned with the driveway, I wonder if there's not some way of uh, doing things so that it doesn't come so, so close and take so much space. Great. Thank you for your comments this evening. May I say something? Uh, nope, we are going to take all the public comments and then we'll come back um, okay. and have a discussion. Uh, anyone else uh, here this evening wishing to, to speak, please. Hi, thank you. I do disagree about something like heating. Uh, I'm so sorry, before you start, would you mind please? Oh, I'm sorry. If yes. That's okay, uh, first, I'm last name and address. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you for the application and the good drawing. I do disagree about some stuff like heating, and like I would prefer electric and number of parking, I would prefer fewer. But I think we, if we don't allow other people to make mistakes and do only what we want, we will have nothing done. And this is definitely an improvement over what we have. And I really appreciate it. Thank you for all your work. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Please. Hi, my name is uh, my name is Susan Stamps, and I'm speaking for the Tree Committee. Um, I had a couple of comments on this plan. One is that it looks like two of the three uh, pine trees are going to be removed. Um, we were hoping that some somehow they could be saved. We'd like the the um, the builder to see if that can be possible. The it looks like as Mr. Benson pointed out, they want to remove the street tree, and I, I would just like to remind them that. In order to remove a street tree, um, there has to be a tree here, and there's no doubt going to be objections, so it won't be allowed, and then it has to be appealed. And um, it, it's not a you, usually um, people figure out some other way to do their plan because it's very rare for um, appeals of street trees, removal of street trees, to actually uh, be be approved. Um, these, these are public assets, and the idea of destroying a public asset for one project is not something that the town generally supports. Um, <clears throat> what else do I have to say? Oh, um, a, a comment on the um, planning for two spaces, the parking spaces uh, uh, per unit, for a total of six. Um, we just went through over a year of a lot of um, consciousness raising about housing development and making it more pedestrian friendly and um, that cars are being used less and less and um, not for the tree committee but just personally, I'm pretty sure that if the property is developed uh, for three housing units, 
there'll be plenty of takers for the units at a good price with only one parking space each. Um, and I think that everything else that I was concerned about were covered by the members of the board and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, would anyone else like to speak this evening? Please. I'm Helena Halperin, also at 11 Bay Street. So, of course, our primary concern is the enormous asphalt or whatever area immediately below our property line. Our concern partly there about all the roots of all of our plantings near the property line and the very large tree that will need to be so substantially cut back that it will probably not survive. We're very glad that this unit may be used in a more dense way. We understand the need for additional housing. Of course, a taller structure is going to diminish our property value a bit, but that is not our concern. Our concern is about that upper driveway and the, what seems to me, excessive parking. You have a letter in your packet from us asking questions about drainage, asking questions about the filling behind the wall because I think how it is drained and how it is filled will affect the question of whether our extensive plantings along the property line will ultimately survive. They may survive the construction, but will they live a year or two thereafter? That's much less clear to me. Um, so I do urge you to look again at our, at our letter there, which which we've raised lots of questions about that. Yes, it will be an improvement aesthetically. Yes, it will, because that property has been uh, untended since the former owner died, naturally. Whatever is built, there will be an improvement. But I do hope that it is not going to kill off the plantings immediately adjacent to the parking and also the large tree that's a bit beyond it but of course has lots of branches over the backyard of 149 Pleasant and presumably roots underneath that you know whose location we don't see now. So I hope in considering this you will think about those questions. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else like to speak this evening? Okay, uh, seeing uh, no one else with their hand raised, we will close public comment and um, move to uh, discussion amongst the board uh, for this public hearing. Um, so Steve, I believe that you had wanted to kick us off with some thoughts. Yes, so um, one of the things, this, although this requires a special permit, this was, this is the this would normally go before the Zoning Board of Appeals, but it is before us by virtue of the property abutting Pleasant Street. And we sort of, I think we've established a bit of a precedent for um, when we review projects that would, you know, that are only before us by virtue of location and not by scope or, or use, uh, we try to stick to the, to the, you know, we try to treat them similarly to the way the ZBA does. Um, if I may approach Please. the... So the thing where parking is going to become a challenge is through, uh, it's set the section of the bylaw 6110A. Um, and this is, um, I used to be a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and this was frequently um, a challenging section, especially for corner lots. And basically, so this is a corner lot, it's got two front, front uh, setbacks, one here and one here. Uh, this looks like your side yard and up here is your rear yard, is yes. that correct? So the bylaw does not allow parking in the front setbacks. There is an exception for quarter lots that are 6,000 square feet or less. This is too large, so you, you don't get that exception. Um, you either have to have the parking in a garage, which you don't have, um, in the foundation, which you can't do because that is your accessible unit, the third option is along a driveway in the side or rear yard, which basically means your parking access has to go through here, and the required spaces have to be, you know, basically uh, from 
know, where this guard starts, they can go all the way until here. Or you could have the driveway here and basically surround the structure. Um, unfortunately, this, this is sort of a driveway mode, but that is what the bylaw requires. Um, you know, one driveway or not. Now, the, the bylaw does make a distinction between required parking spaces and where you are allowed to park. So, the required spaces, you need three. They have to be here or here, or, you know, in a garage or in the foundation. But spaces in the setback can be used for parking, but they cannot count towards the minimum. Uh, effectively, if you consider the building that's there, that's cur current site conditions, you know, there's a drive, there's one space in the basement, it looks like, and the driveway. The driveway, you're allowed to park there, it's, uh, but it's, you know, it's sort of like the bylaw requires one extra space, but we can't count it, and it's in addition to the maximum. Um, so you are, you can provide more parking, you know, elsewhere, but you basically, you need to find a way to get your three spaces here. Um, now with regard to the usable open space, if this were coming before the ZBA, um, this would be, um, I, my expectation is that this would require a variance, but because um, I, I think there's a reasonable argument that uh, due to conditions of soil, shape, or topography, namely the slope that exists on this site but not in the zoning district in general, there's probably a fair, um, a fair chance of getting a variance. Can't speak for the CDA, but that's, that's just sort of my reading of, of you know, what the requirements are. Um, so that's, that's my take on like the parking issues and the open space issues, and I think we should have a discussion about how we'd like to treat that sure so steve um you would then suggest that perhaps we would move the structure plan west so that they can create the driveway that still retains the setback from the adjacent property line because again the driveway would not require the double width space that's currently there and then place the parking plan northeast so i mean that that would work that could work uh the question is um, whether, uh, how far do we, how far can it move before you hit the 20 foot, 25 foot right. yard, front yard setback? Yep. I'm sorry, I did not understand. Um, so, first of all, it's like... Uh, let, 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 let's... Oh, okay. Sorry, we'll sorry, we'll, sorry, we'll sorry. come to you when we have a question. <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. because we need to talk through yes. what we're actually okay. asking of you before, before we... Uh, Yes. And just Before we ask you a question. If the section of the zoning bylaw is 6.1.10.A, so yes. this just so you have that for reference. Uh, Jean, your thoughts on uh, Steve's suggestion, uh, which would potentially eliminate some of our um, two, two driveway concerns. Um, Steve did a good job articulating what I was trying to say. Okay. Um, before, which is, if they locate three parking spaces, not in the front yard setback, then they can have a driveway going to those spaces where people can park. But I was thinking this is the same thing. If they came in off gray, in one one line instead of two, pulling it back from the adjacent property a little bit, they could have it come in and go around. I don't know if the topography will allow that, or if you have to do more, you know, much more earth moving than you'd want to do. But um, or pull the whole thing back to do that. So that's clearly one way to do it. The, um, I agree with Steve that under normal circumstances they would have to go to the ZBA and ask for a variance from the usable open space right. and also if they wanted to get one um, for the driveway in the front setback they would, they would have to do that too based on the same issue with topography. I've been thinking a lot about whether we could say yes to this and I don't think we can. I think that um, 
we shouldn't just decide that people can park in the front setback without them going through the variance process. As for the usable open space, we have in some other cases said, if people haven't made these things any worse, right. then we will accept it. Correct. But we've usually done that when it's buildings and it's not commercial. commercial and buildings and not open space. And you can tie the commercial to non-conformance. You can't really tie usable open space to non-conformance because there's nothing in the bylaw that says that. But I think we could probably we remove that requirement with the last. Yeah, we, we might be able to do that. But I think they have to do something with the parking and we have to decide, unless we're going to let them do this, and we have to decide what to do about the usable open space. And, and they need to talk to the tree warden, and I'd like them to talk to um, the head of inspectional services about whether they can use gas or whether this has to be a, a solely electric building under the new, under the new bylaw. So that when, we, when they come back, we will understand which one it's going to be and if they need to make any changes as a result of that. Steve? So what, uh, just uh, two things I also wanted to touch on. Uh, regarding the vegetated buffer? Yes. Uh, there is no, the bylaw does not say how big a vegetated buffer is. And um, my recollection, you know, in dealing in using this, adjudicating this provision with the zoning board, as a member, former member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, 18 inches would, was nice, but no, but, you know, definitely no less than 12. So I, I think a, a narrow strip is would be sufficient. That's why I asked if they could just pull it back mm -hmm. a little bit, then they could plant one. Yeah. The other and have room to backfill for when they need to build that retaining wall. That's the other. You know, you have to over excavate right. in order to complete it. Now the shall one other consideration with parking is um, parking does not count as usable open space. So on a flat lot, playing the you know the the having to do a driveway all the way around the structure sometimes you run sometimes one can run into the situation where by the time you get the, the parking that satisfies you know you get the parking that satisfies the parking requirements you no longer have enough usable open space to satisfy the usable open space requirements um, in in the case of getting a variance for the usable open space requirement because of the you know the lack of because of the slope of the, the parcel that at least you know becomes not a, not an issue. Thank you, Steve. Um, Ken, thoughts on the topics? I, I see think. I see things a little differently. That's probably <laughs> I know we do. Um, I see it now where if we if we are to push back and say they need to not park on the front setback then they're going to have to put a driveway and park in the back and the side and that would that would just totally uh, dismantle any landscape that they're leaving there as is they're going to go in there and cut all those trees down they're going to grade that thing right over so it, i think what we're asking for is uh, Balancing uh, of, of these two, because uh, we do have a desire to keep existing trees there, and we do have uh, a desire to uh, to leave as much of the existing nature there as possible without overbuilding everything that we can do. You can build certainly build a driveway all the way around and come around and park, stick it here, stick it there, but now you kind of about all get rid of all that green space, uh, all the old trees that were there may have to go. So I'm not sure about that. So I'm on the fence right now about this parking. Uh, I understand uh, the architect's uh, desire to uh, separate the two uh, parking spaces, one for the handicap so they have access. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get uh, access from the back or from the side to get to, the, to, the, to an accessible unit. Um, 
the only thing I, I would say is uh, the curb cut that's right now on uh, Pleasant Street will have to shift. I don't think we want to just say, okay, go ahead and take this existing street tree down. You're going to have to curve your, uh, your driveway a little bit up front. There's a, you know, that, uh, I, I don't want to start going in a realm where if something's in your way in the, the street, just cut the tree down. No, okay. But I think that could, that's, that's easy enough to do, is to, uh, to slide the, uh, the curb cut over and just curve the street a little bit, uh, curve the driveway over a little more, and that would work. We think that the tree is not where you place. Then let's show it on the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I see right now. I mean, it's a, it's balanced between the two. I mean, how much do how much do we want to disturb in this existing here, and, and cut the trees down and put a driveway all around so we get the parking where we want it, or we allow the parking to go where it goes. Um, that's a discussion I think we want to talk about. That's how I see it right now. Not putting these blinders on say, okay, it's just a parking. No, I want to look at the whole thing and say, you know, the trees, the, the landscaping, and then the parking, all together. And say, uh, see what we, we want to do here. And that's my recommendation. Thank you, Ken. Shana. Um, <clears throat> I, I agree with Ken. Um, it, would, it would be unfortunate to request a site plan that um, that none of us were it, it would be unfortunate to request a site plan that was detrimental to the um, natural environment um, uh, because we felt hemmed in by or b because of parking requirements um, I was I was wondering if um, if there was an opportunity for maybe head-in parking off that, off that um, Pleasant Street, uh, Ple Pleasant Street driveway, so that if you did head in to the left, um, you drive in, take a left, um, uh, you certainly could not get six spaces there. Yeah, thank you. You couldn't get six spaces there. Uh, but you could get, you could probably get some there. Um, I think Jean makes a good point about, um, yeah. If if you if you step away from six, if there may be other options. Maybe that's one. I'm not an engineer. I wouldn't know. Well, we can look at we can look at it, but. Uh, just as you probably are all aware, just, uh, you know, a space is going to be at least 18 feet in length. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to need typically 20 feet for an aisle. Yep. So what happens with that is you end up with a 20-foot aisle to get at the spaces. So you're essentially creating a 40 by 40 parking lot in order to, set, to suffice that parking requirement. Just approximately. Um, and if I could, this was um, historical. Wanted this set up this way. Yep. As a builder, I, you know, wanted to do it somewhere different, but they wanted it based on safety issues for Pleasant. Mm -hmm. So we got a certificate of appropriateness based on this design. So any changes, the, I guess, negates that. I think for the building, we'll, this board will talk you through the site planning. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we thought you were talking about the big tree that's uh, um, on... That's further uh, down. Yeah, yeah, that one's further down. So... We're not talking about that. It's the smaller no, one. No, I see, yeah. I see that there. Yeah. The smaller one, we'll make sure we show it. Thank and you. if it's an issue, right. we can the tree again, be or go around. I think that that one is fairly newly planted yeah. um, as is the one on gray um, 
I think it might not be a bad idea for you to measure the caliper of the tree um, because I did on the one on gray and it's not one and a half inches and um, one and a half inches is the minimum it needs to be to require the hearing. So just see what you're dealing with on Pleasant. One on gray doesn't have to be moved. I, I know. I just that's the one I happen to yep. think that's awfully spindly. Let me take a look. It's and pretty, it's pretty <laughs> yes, so I, I did not measure the personally the one on Pleasant. The one on Pleasant's been there at least seven years. Okay, like I said, I, I didn't just know what you're dealing with before you go in. Shana, I'm going to continue on that. So, um, I, I agree with Shana. I think um, that the gymnastics to, it would be interesting to me to understand whether we would be paving more of this lot to try and get to a singular driveway by moving the building plan west, so towards Gray Street, um, and trying to um, meet more of the requirements per uh, more of the letter and the spirit of the corner lot restrictions in the bylaw, um, as opposed to having the two the two driveways currently. Um, I do have concerns about the driveway directly abutting the lot line, and if we do wind up keeping that upper driveway on Gray Street, I think, Jean, to your point, I would like it. it I would like us to look at whether or not there is a opportunity to um, pull that in, so that you have it to. Again, to Steve's point, at least a 12 inch, if not an 18 inch buffer. I, I, yeah. I, I just really have a, a problem knowing, yeah. again, how you're going to have to build that so wall with the, the a, a adjacent property. Yeah, so I, I was actually looking at the plan and mm -hmm. I can get an exact measurement, but I believe there is 12 inches there now. It's just hard to see because uh, on our plan, we put in erosion and sedimentation control mm -hmm. on the other side of the wall, but we can do section that would be make helpful. sure we clearly define the distance from the face of the wall to the property line great and we can show the height of the wall as a as a typical yeah. and indicate the uh, distance from the top of the wall to the existing grade along the entire side of the abutment. And, and then it would be helpful when you come back to indicate what you'll be planting there as a vegetated buffer too in the 12 inches? Yep. Okay. Yep. Marigolds. Show the marigolds. Um, again, I think to me it, it would be worthwhile um, to see the, the exercise as to working to consolidate to a single driveway that curves plan east. But we have the, how can we move the, uh, if, if we move the house, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to talk. So is that, Steve, what you were looking, There's looking at? I wasn't, I didn't have any thoughts specifically about, I was trying to indicate where relative to the house, the park, the bylaw requires the park to be. Um, I have no objections to moving, to, you know, to playing around with the position of the building on the lot to facilitate that better, but I hadn't envisioned anything in particular. Okay. I'm not opposed to two driveways, necessarily. Okay. Um, I 
have trouble with the driveways being in the setbacks, though. Um, not the driveways, the parking areas being in the setbacks. So if you could get three parking areas out of the setbacks, then you could use the driveways to get there as other ways to park. I, we've tried to make this clear three times how this is how the bylaw works. You may be able to get, I mean, it's a little hard to tell from um, the diagram, you may be able to get one space in the front driveway that doesn't go into the setback, although it's a little bit hard to tell. And you could probably get two in the back that don't go into the setback if you extended, if you, maybe if you extended the building. It's a little hard to tell. Um, I just want to ask a question, um, just from heavy pavement. So if you have a driveway that's getting to a parking space, what's going to prevent people from parking on the paved driveway. They're allowed. They're allowed. Yeah, that's, nothing. that's what the bylaw says. So you're just creating more pavement to accommodate more cars. Yeah. You would you would accommodate the same number of cars, but you would just have three designated parking. It's places. the difference between designated so parking. This doesn't seem. It's oh, how the okay. bylaw works. Oh. So, oh. so you you would just. The 25 foot setback would be designated spaces. Correct. 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 Access to get to a designated Correct. space. Correct. Okay. But you okay. can absolutely park. Correct. Park in there. It's it's okay. yeah. It's but those need to be shown on the plan. What your designated gotcha. parking spots are. I was so yeah. worried about all those guests. So, so. Two. It's it's, three. Yeah. it's the bylaw. Gotcha. 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 That's a simple fix. So I think it's just labeling, right? Yes. Well, and making sure you have enough room after for, the setback. After the setback, so um, the. Um, oh, because of here. Minimum dimensions: eighteen feet by eight and a half feet. So what G I think what Jean just said is you may already be there, right. but you can only it. call it three, but but Correct. you probably okay. will not be able to say that it's six spaces. Gotcha. So this is what I meant earlier, what I tried to say, was trying to convey earlier when I said that the, you know, the driveway that leads to the required parking space is another parking space that you have to have, but it doesn't count as being a parking space. <laughs> Clear now. Okay. <laughs> yes. <coughs> okay. So, let me see if I can summarize what we would like the um, applicant to uh, take a look at before returning to the board, and um, we'll work with the board and with Sarah to determine a future hearing date because there are a couple things that may be time dependent for you to follow up with, with others right. in town. Um, so the list that I have is an updated lead checklist and a narrative. Oh, I'll go through it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so an updated lead checklist and a narrative, um, a section through the retaining wall showing that it is pulled a minimum of 12 inches, preferably a minimum of 18 inches off of the rear lot line. Um, specific identification of the parking locations um, that are uh, not within the setback requirements and with the designated accessible space shown, including the um, dimensions of the accessible space. Uh, we would ask that you meet with the tree warden to review um, the uh, requirements for any removal of uh, trees, which are required uh, within the setback for your construction, as well as um, 
whether uh, the exact location of the, the trees in the public way and whether or not you are able to relocate the entrance to that driveway to avoid that tree or what the process would be to relocate that tree on the public way, which may be lengthy. Um, we would also encourage you to um, confirm with the Director of Inspectional Services whether you will be subject to the new fossil free Fossil, I cannot fossil say this, fuel fossil fuel free, free. Fossil, <laughs> fuel fossil fuel free. free. <laughs> we need an acronym for this or something that I can, <laughs> yeah, fossil fuel free <laughs> by <laughs> law, <laughs> exactly the, um, and uh, so that you can come back to us with exactly where, you know, the condensers right. will be on the lot. Um, we also would like you to either come back with, um, how you will incorporate solar on the roof or reach out to the Historic Commission to identify whether or not they would consider that. Get a letter. Or that would be prohibited mm -hmm. under your um, certificate of well, appropriateness. I, I, let me just say on that, this is not just go to them and get a letter. This is make a proposal on what a good one could look like and let them say yes or no. That's fair. Kind of did that, but yeah. Yeah, so right? let's just, then let's see the work. I think that's that's what we, we want to see is sure. you know the fact that you've explored it, it's either been approved or denied. And, and, the, and there's a form that you can get from um, planning that goes with the uh, solar on the roof. You have to. Do. We like the project. We want to help you get to, mm -hmm. to a to a feasible, buildable. <clears throat> there's a lot of work to get project. Yeah. I yeah. completely understand you. You've you've, you've yeah. done a lot of work here, and um, uh, we are trying to help you find ways within the bylaw to get to um, what looks to be a, a, a very thoughtful project. It, it is a lumber building. building. Um, what was that? I said it is a lovely looking building. Well, yeah, <laughs> a lot of work went in. Yes, I, I, we can see that. Um, and then I think the other, and, and I apologize, I don't recall if this is articulate. We do have that, that it's a, you're, you're looking at an asphalt driveway. Okay. Yeah, were there other things that I missed? Uh, uh, could you also indicate where your exterior mechanical units go? I yep. did, yep, have that one. Oh, you did? Yep. Yes, yep. When, they sh when they show whether it's gas or electric to show where it goes. Oh, I did. Yep. Sorry. It's because I couldn't say the first part, so it just. We haven't it. designed all that yet because. Just show Give me us the area. A dash square. This gotcha. way, that's where it's going to go. I'm okay. not asking you the size. We don't, we don't have to. Okay. Brand. I don't need a spec. I see. Just a location. This is where the unit goes on the site. Okay. Um, also, uh, one last thing is the trash removal. Where do you guys plan to store the trash cans? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Are you speaking about during construction or no. the residents? Residents. residents. Uh, any other items and then we'll see if they have any, okay, any questions on those items or? I, I just want to um, clarify. Yes. So you have the ability to allow parking in the front yard setback, is that correct or no? We have the ability to provide relief when it is in the uh, best interest of the project and it is uh, in support of um, our findings of uh, appropriateness okay. under environmental design review. Now, um, do you want one driveway or can we have two driveways? Where, where we landed was let us See the revisions based on the two driveways you've shown um, okay. w within the specific items that we have um, identified. Okay. So now, it, not, any other objections? Well, the the okay. I'm not so the the, dr the Pleasant Street driveway. I don't see how one avoids having um, required parking in the front setback with that as a second driveway. Um, now if the if it continued around yeah. 
if it continued around the side, <coughs> you know, if say you took off took off the Gray Street driveway and had one that from the, the Pleasant Street one circle around the building, or you took out the Pleasant Street driveway and had the Gray Street circle around the building. But I don't. Um, I mean, typically for a two, you know, for two driveways on a corner lot. Um, you know, you would have to have one going into a side yard and one going into a, a, a rear yard. And I don't, maybe there's, well, which is, which is to say for two driveways, they would basically have to be here and here. And, oh, this is 11 foot one, um, so technically there is, there are those pine trees. But there are all those pine trees there. So those are coming yeah. out anyway. No, this is no. two of them are they're leaning over the house. It's a safety issue. You have yeah. three shown coming out on this plan. Yeah, three, three out of five. Correct. Also, Steve, this is like 15 to 60 feet. I don't know. Maybe I'm stand corrected, but it's like 15 to 16 feet of elevation differences. Yeah. 17. So, 17. 17. Okay. 17. I don't know. I'm, I'm not familiar, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can. I'm just saying there's quite a bit mm -hmm. of elevation yeah. difference, okay? Yeah. So we're talking about king walls and all sorts of up and, and this And this may be something where, you know, again, uh, uh, you know, there, is, there could be a reasonable case for a variance because of the slope. And again, yes, but. We don't have to grant them variance. We have the ability to. Provide we, can't, we can't. We grant cannot grant a variance. No, but we don't have to. Okay. We we can provide relief. relief. Yes. Up to up to support a point. of the um, the project in its efforts to meet the environmental design review yes. and okay. the special permit criteria. Mm -hmm. So. Sorry, I don't want to be late with this, but yes. I think it would be helpful for us to show that it could be met uh, in the setbacks, and then we could then show where it's preferred to give the board some, um, to look at different scenarios to justify granting. Steve, that's what you're requesting, correct? To there, see the other option as well. I mean, the other, I would prefer, I, I think that you know, given you know, given Section Six One Ten A, the parking requirements would be, I think, would significantly significantly <coughs> easier to meet with a single driveway. Um, I'm not opposed to, you know, I, I'm not ruling. I, I'm not opposed to two, I just don't see how that would really work out. <coughs> um, the way that it's currently shown. Yeah. Okay, so yes, we are looking for at least a diagrammatic study to see at the, options. the options for a single driveway. Yes. But does it matter if this is based on the Arlington Historic proposing this, not us as, say, the builder per se? It's the town that wants this driveway set up. The historic, not not us per se, is the, the builder. You know, it's the town that said we want you to do this, and if you do this, we'll give you a certificate of appropriateness. So we said okay. Again, there. Um, so it's the town going to right. give the town. We will follow up with okay. the historic commission. Okay. I think Sarah, we should we sure. should do that because this this board really <laughs> looks at the siting. The, um, the, the configuration of your, of your lot and many of the requirements that are not the um, aesthetic historical um, I just want items. for the record to say that this is like the historical push. I, I understand, but I also want to be clear sure. what the jurisdiction of this board is and, as well. And, and we don't have any requirement to say what the historical commission says is what we have to follow. Yeah, it's tough as an applicant. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. absolutely. I completely absolutely. understand. So I just wanted absolutely. to just articulate yep. that. I, I, I do understand that, which is why we will 
follow up with historic Excellent. to let them know where this conversation is moving okay, so that we can get back to you if um, if there is any uh, concern about moving in the way that we've asked you to study with the singular driveway. Understood. Yes. So, um, again, clarifying here, um, the only place that we can have a single driveway is off of Pleasant Street because of the uh, accessible room. So what you are asking for is a worsening of the congestion on Pleasant Street. That's that's what you're asking for. I do, do not agree that two additional cars, again, we're looking at three, we're looking at three parking spaces that two additional cars would be, and, I, and again, I'd need to look at whether, excuse me, excuse me, I would uh, need to take a look at whether there are two or one or two deeded parking, legal parking spaces in that lot, and uh, having one additional would not constitute adding to the congestion of Pleasant Street. Well. Okay. Um, so we will follow up with the Historic Commission regarding um, the uh, dual versus single. If you uh, want a couple of days, you can get a copy of all our notes from Sarah. Okay, great. Thank Just you. so we're all on the same page. Okay. Great. Anything else? To request from the applicant. Just, I just want to be clear that they can also present the two driveway options so we can see. Correct. Both Absolutely. Of them. Yes. Correct. Okay. We're not all against the two driveways. <coughs> Correct. Okay. okay. We just want you to look at it. And this is multifamily. Yeah. So this is. This no, is a three. It is a four. That's look, right. That's I under at, state. I looked state, it up. Right. It's under state. This is. It's. State is four. four. Right. It's state a, is four, it's a four units. Three. Correct. No, no, it's it's because um right. that, it's I'm not, saying it's four it's because it's not over it's not four it's units not or more. Mixed use. No. Nope. It, it is multifamily with, though. It, it is multifamily. And again, I, I think Jean, there's a difference. Choice. There's a difference. I need to I need to look this up okay. because there's a difference in what's defined as multifamily in two different places. Mm -hmm. So I need to look up three versus four. No, units. It's it's simple majority vote if it's multifamily located within a half mile of commuter rail station, subway station, ferry terminal or bus station. None of those okay. it doesn't meet any of those. Second is mixed use. And third is reduced parking space residential use ratio. So those are the three. Right, and it's not reduced parking space because three are required. And, and so it doesn't meet any of the requirements. Okay. And that's in 40A section nine. Thank you. No, it was the it was the definition of um, multifamily, was, which is again different in the building code it was, versus. It was for town versus and when it Understood. Okay. okay. Um, so with those requests. Um, we should look at a new here, um, a um, continued hearing date. So, Sarah, um, let's look at what we currently have on our agenda. We have meetings currently coming up on the 9th and the 23rd, but I believe we have fairly full agendas already for both of those. So, we would be looking at October 7th for our next available hearing date. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, there, yes. Oh, no worries. Um, so I think October 7th is our next available uh, hearing date. We do not have any other meetings in August. Um, Sarah, on the 9th, do we have, I think we have one or two hearings that night already. Um, on September 9th, we have. We could do two. We, have, we could do two. We have Belknap. We have two. It's Dudley at these two as well. Excuse me. Fifteen hundred Mass Ave. Scheduled for the ninth. Last time. <coughs> totally Is that the only one that's scheduled for the ninth? I think Belknap. 
Down that? Down that. Down that. You guys would do sooner or later. And they'd need to get us the material a week ahead of time. October would be good. Octo okay, so then we don't even have to look at what our other hearing dates are. Time to do the engineering. Sure. So and, and that would either be October 7th or <coughs> October 21st. The 7th. 7th, okay. We need everything a week ahead of time, yep. though. Okay, October 7th. All right, is there, let me see, pull this back up. Is there a motion to continue the hearing for docket number 3810-149 Pleasant Street to October 7th? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm the yes as well. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Everyone. I appreciate it. I will see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and that concludes uh, agenda item number two for this evening. Uh, we will now move to agenda item number three, which is the economic development uh, presentation. And I'd like to invite our economic development uh, coordinator to join us. And uh, for our, for our applicants and. Uh, I can ask you to please um, continue your conversation in the hallway so that we can move on with the meeting. I'm sorry, did you ask something of me? Uh, just if, I could, if you were going to continue the conversation to do so in the hallway so we can continue with the meeting. Thank you very much. I guess we can be intimate. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, I'm Katie Lusai. I'm the Economic Development Coordinator, and I'm just here for fun. Great. Thank you, Katie. Yes. So, I did write a script. So, this is my presentation over here. So, you may want to swing up this around. Thank you for having me this evening. I'm before the Redevelopment Board to introduce myself and give a fun overview of economic development in the town as we preliminarily start the master planning process and the work of forming an Arlington Heights Zoning Business District. First, we're going to look at businesses by the numbers. Next slide. Thank you, Marisa. So, here's a snapshot of the businesses in Arlington. We have about 1,700 establishments in Arlington which means registered businesses. This could be a business as big as the Myrac dealership to as small as a massage therapist who runs a home practice. The top industry in Arlington is healthcare and social services. Top employers include the town, Armstrong, Ar Armstrong Ambulance, uh, Myrac, Whole Foods, Leader Bank, and Brightview Senior Living. Thank you, Marisa. Community strengths. Arlington has so many community strengths. In, its, in the most recent Envision Arlington survey, respondents overwhelmingly reported that the Minuteman Bikeway is the most valuable attraction in Arlington. This was followed by Spy Pond and the Res, as well as our local theaters, the Regent and Capitol. Our open spaces are highly valued by our community, as well as the town's walkability, public safety, great schools, and businesses. I also noted the uh, what's missing in Arlington. It was a open-ended question where uh, people submitted, and here are the top answers. And uh, in the last week after making this presentation, I heard that we are in fact getting a tea house here in Arlington. So. Uh, it came to fruition. Um, we are, however, losing one of our uh, vintage shops in Arlington. We're missing, uh, we're losing Buzzy's Bazaar uh, over in East Arlington. Local receipts. One of the best indicators of how our hospitality industry in town is doing, uh, one of my favorite ways, is by checking our local receipts, specifically our meal receipts. With the 250th, I've been regularly comparing Arlington to Lexington and Concord. Arlington's made a very healthy post-pandemic recovery and in fact has brought in more meals receipts than ever before. Of course, this could be due to inflation or other factors, but as we see with Lexington and Concord, 
Those factors are likely only a portion as such an increase in recovery, um, and we hope to see this trend continue. I've noted that we do have about 75 establishments. This does vary a little bit year to year. Um, we're noted, it's a little bit harder to see with this um, projection, but yeah, we're in purple, and then Concord is in pink, and then Lexington is in green. Um, and then it's cut off there, but FY 2021 was the pandemic. Um, and then we just got the full scope for FY 2024. So yes. Just a, a question on the on the axes. Yeah. So for FY 2024, it looks like we have $700,000 worth of something. Is that yes. $700,000 of gross receipts for meals or $700,000 of meal, meal tax? It, it's gross mm -hmm. receipts. It, it's gross receipts. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, correct. Great question, though. Um, so, moving on, I also wanted to throw in uh, room receipts as well. As Arlington hopes to bring in another hotel, um, I wanted to uh, show room receipts compared to our friends in Concord and Lexington. As we have only uh, one hotel that's actually done quite well. Additionally, I've included our community impact fee for short-term rentals. It actually has been cut off at the bottom. Um, this fee started in 2020. Our rentals are concentrated in East Arlington. Uh, last year, this fee, oh, thanks, Marisa. Uh, last year, this fee brought in almost $30,000, which was almost half of uh, the total to date. Um, I wanted to note that all of this information is public. Um, I've pulled uh, the previous information from Mass Econ, which is a public resource, um, and then all the data is available on uh, uh, the Division of Local Services. If you're a big data nerd, it's really great uh, to utilize. Can I ask what the short term, what is that? Is that Airbnb? Is it? Yes, short term rentals, Airbnb primarily. You could do uh, Verbo as well. Uh, Airbnb is the, the leading market uh, provider. Moving on to everyone's favorite, vacant storefronts. So currently I'm enforcing the bylaw as though the recent changes in the Springtown meeting um, will be approved um, by the Attorney General. And I've also gotten much stricter about enforcing the bylaw. This um, in particular means enforcing the removal of non-conforming signage uh, under the bylaw's language and accruing fees for violators under the bylaw. Uh, the bylaw is, the vacant storefront bylaw is still a valuable tool for economic development and I stand by that the best output from the bylaw uh, enforcement is creating connections with property owners and um, uh, obtaining information. Because I've been more forceful, I've re received a few checks in the last week and am expecting to see some uh, prominent signs uh, removed soon. <laughs> I can speak more to anyone offline about specific properties as my door is always open. Moving on to signage review. One of the essential components of my job is to review all sign permits. One of the recent challenges I faced uh, reviewing signs um, is, uh, oh, sorry. One of the recent challenges I faced uh, in reviewing signs is providing and providing limited options for businesses who have moved into buildings that have hit the signage allowance maximums. This is the case for 626 Mass Ave, as shown in the diagram. Uh, they will soon either need to install a multi-tenant sign or apply for a special permit with the redevelopment board. Another challenge uh, is dealing with, uh, ah, I love when my dyslexia comes in. You can move on to the next slide. Another challenge is dealing with the town not allowing neon. When ta tastefully done, neon is a modern way for businesses to visually engage with their customers. With neighboring communities, um, such as Somerville and Cambridge, allowing NEON, um, this puts Arlington businesses at a slight disadvantage to work around this restriction. Moving on, artists live work. Back in 2021, at a town meeting, Arlington adopted artists live work into the zoning bylaw. This meant that in the industrial district, housing was allowed by right, subject to conditions set forth by the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. However, about a month ago, we discovered that the design standards and guidelines, as well as the artist certification process, were never finalized following staff turnover. 
So I will be picking this work up again as quickly as possible. Um, we, the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture met on Thursday evening. Um, lots of notes were left behind for me, so I have a lot to work with. Um, and my fellow planning staff, including Sarah, has very kindly offered lots of support in putting that together. Moving on to murals. Murals! We're finalizing a very exciting mural project on the American Alarm Building with our lovely artist, Sophie Tuttle, whose uh, mural all of you have probably seen. She completed the pollinator mural on the side of Wild Ember. She's coming back to complete another mural here in Arlington. We're also working on completing two to three more murals to be installed by the end of November because that is when our ARPA funding expires. And we would like to use it before we lose it. Um, it has been surprisingly challenging to find property owners who will let us use their walls even with the offer to let us pay and curate for these murals. So if you have any property owners who would like to graciously lend us their walls, please let us know. And last but not least, we've got our Arlington Heights business district. Claire and I have been working on, we'll be working on fall engagement for the Arlington Heights business district, which came out of the MAPC's Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan in 2019. Uh, the use table for the business district um, is already drafted. Um, it was drafted based on the feedback from the engagement sessions back in 2018, 2019. So those will need to be refreshed uh, now that it is 2024, likely going into 2025. Um, and I also wanted to include a uh, a little bit of a fun fact up there in the corner is the Robbins Spring Hotel. So the Heights did previously have quite a robust hotel uh, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. It had 45 rooms, a bowling alley, and a golf course. So it is possible to bring a hotel back into the Heights. Um, so yes, it'll be very great to go back out in the Heights. The Heights is already a very active community, um, and it was great to see it brought to life with um, yes, and there's other fun stuff that I'm always working on. If we go on to the next slide, um, if any of you uh, saw or took part in any Arlington 250 activities, I spend a lot of my time working on Arlington 250 as we enter the semi quincentennial in April of 2025. We are working on a very robust schedule of activities and events for the weekend of April 2025, working in collaboration with Lexington, Concord, and Lincoln. Um, we've also got our wayfinding project that Maurice has been championing for the last several years um, that is finally trying to get to the finish line. And we've recently updated the business resource guide. So that's my fun little overview of everything that's going on in economic development but I'd love to hear any questions or thoughts that you guys have. Great, thank you very much, Katie. Really yes. appreciate it. Thanks for sharing everything of course. that's going on. Um, so we'll start with Steve. Any questions or comments for Katie? Yeah, uh, thank, thank you for the overview. Yes. Um, I hope that we could, would it be possible to have this slide deck added to our uh, agenda? agenda? Because it's, it, I'd like to show it to some people. But I, I do have two questions. Yes. Um, so first, um, the director of the Chamber of Commerce, Beth Locke, uh, she appeared before uh, the Redevelopment Board last April uh, to talk about you know business development from her perspective. And one of the bits of feedback that um, I recall getting from that meeting was that there are a lot of businesses looking you know that would like to be in Arlington, but um, we have spaces that are not appealing or that we don't have the right kind of spaces or not the kind of spaces they're looking for. Um, so my first question is, do you agree or disagree with that and why? Yes, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I, I get calls weekly from people looking to move into Arlington um, and I, I keep a, a list of them. <laughs> like overall our commercial stock for space is very old and it's very small. Um, 
I'd say overall, we, it, our spaces are like 2,000 square feet and under, generally, um, which suits some people, but not most people. Um, and what we do have is very old, so it requires a lot of upfront costs, which can be really daunting to a lot of small business owners. Um, there's, of course, the outliers. 30 Mystic Street is a big outlier, mm -hmm. um, and that's been vacant for about a year, so it's, it takes a long time to make the right match for those kind of spaces. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the flip side of the problem, where you have this, like, this, this unicorn of a lot. Um, and trying to make the right fit for that is really difficult as well. But absolutely, I have a lot of people coming to me saying they really want to look, move into Arlington because it's such a great community, but making that match. Um, we've also um, sometimes had the problem where I finally get in touch with people and they have trouble reaching brokers. Mm -hmm. So we do have these vacant storefronts, but the real estate agents aren't picking up the phone or they're not having an easy time getting in touch with them. Right, and the second question I have, um, there are areas of town that I categorize as large monolithic residential districts. They're not very walkable because there's nothing there to walk to because there, we don't allow businesses in those part of town. Um, you know, sort of what I would, hope we could do over time is or something that, that I at least you know like the idea of is allowing small neighborhood scale businesses like coffee shops or beauty supply plays etc um, in actual residential districts and I was wondering if you had any thoughts on whether that was actually would be something that's viable yeah definitely yeah one of our actually um, a Nice story, Center Pilates, um, which is moving, um, they've got a, a storefront opening up in Arlington Center. One of the proprietors, he started uh, a home business, not, not related to Pilates, but um, yeah, he started out of his home. Um, that was his first um, kind of taste for entrepreneurship. So I would love to see more home occupations. Um, that's something I would need to explore more with um, our director of inspectional services because you come up against a lot of challenges for bringing people into your home mm -hmm. and the requirements about that because that often acts as a, a, a barrier for entry. Great. Great. Gene. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. I just want to follow up on part of Steve's question, which was I think one of the questions we all had is. So what type of spaces are people looking for that Arlington doesn't have? I mean, you said, you know, the spaces are too small, too old. Like, what size? What, what are they looking for? And are they retail? Are they office? What, what are we talking about? Not, not office. <laughs> okay. Less office, more retail, uh -huh. more fitness. Um, mm -hmm. We're already seeing a lot more fitness-centered businesses come into Arlington, mm -hmm. but I'm still getting a lot more calls that even more want to come in. Mm -hmm. um, unsurprisingly, more childcare facilities want to come into Arlington. But overall, you're looking at least to like three to 5,000 square feet want to come in. Um, that's, that's really the sweet spot. Um, anywhere up to 8,000 square feet. There, there are, not to go on, like, we, I'm, I'll, I'll start talking about specific properties. We, we have some on like Dudley Street that like could work, but then property owners, once they get over a certain threshold of square footage, they want uh, tenants to take the whole building, um, which makes sense from an economic standpoint, but it's that's um, that's very difficult from a, uh, for tenants. Um, but yeah, fit, uh, retail, fitness, uh, less so restaurants, um, which I'm not as surprised about because we do have a, a quite a healthy hospitality um, sector in Arlington. We do have a lot of eateries. Um, those those are the two that I see trending right now in childcare. Any industrial looking at the industrial districts? No. Overall industrial, I mean, I, I, as you all have heard, industrial is really going down. And Arlington really isn't suited for industrial. Um, 
we're we're not we're not located on any really major thoroughfares. We're not on any of the highways. Um, Lexington is really having a hard time with their life sciences. They've got a big project, 440 Bedford Street. Um, that's going up. That's a huge multi-tenant life sciences building. Um, but that isn't fully occupied. Um, and that's brand, brand new. Um, so I, I don't think Arlington is, is really the right fit for industrial life sciences. Um, but where we do, where we are strong in is the smaller retail places, smaller square footage. We do, we do still have a, a, a great segment um, of Arlington businesses like GoInvo, those smaller uh, mm -hmm. SMEs. You'd mentioned neon signs. So some neons allowed under the zoning bylaw. So what what could we change in the zoning bylaw since some neons allowed? I guess <laughs> I get maybe I get a little nervous with neon <laughs> in in what is and isn't allowed. And um, I guess I wasn't fully here for maybe Donut Villa. Um, yeah, we don't. We didn't approve their sign either. So I don't think they came in front of us. I think yeah. that was done administratively. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think just um, I don't know. I think you know having an open mind and and maybe writing the maybe maybe taking a, a flexible approach to the zoning bylaw. I think cabinet signs and light box signs. Um, is something else that I would reconsider allowing because um, that often comes up as well, uh, not just neon. Do they end up with good signs anyhow or so like what are we losing by? Oh, it's a good question I, and I could be wrong. Hmm. Just a question I pose really. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Shana? Um, Katie, thank you. This is great. And Steve and Jean um, asked most, most of my questions really just want to know who wants to be here and how do we get them here. So, um, But other than that, uh, the murals, what, what kind of buildings are you looking for? Anything? Yeah, Any, anything. And I, I, I say anything, but, you know, primarily along our, our uh, you know, well-trafficked corridors. Yeah. Um, and and permanent. Like there are some buildings. I'm thinking of one um, that uh, on on Mass Ave that'll be coming down in a few years. Um, uh, we so. ask we ask that they stay up for at least three years. Mm -hmm. But we've also looked at um, the like uh, foot tunnel that yeah. goes from like the bike. Uh, next to the bike path, like to the Boys and Girls Club, um, which might eventually get reconstructed. So permanent isn't, you know, out of the question because things do happen. Great. Thanks. I'll keep my eyes open. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Kim? <coughs> you brought up um, some of the concerns of uh, some of our commercial spaces. Uh, one was the the fact that they're so small. That's very hard for us to control or do anything about. Oh, of course. But the other thing you brought up was the age and the quality, the quality of the spaces. So, have we thought about maybe uh, providing some sort of tax break for new tenants that come in so they can uh, you know, spend a little more uh, front end on TI to encourage them to do some of the summer work? And so that uh, the cost of the first initial startup of going in, say, oh, I just spent all this money. Well, let's encourage them. Say, hey, yeah, you have to spend some money, but we'll give you a little bit of a break, so you're not, it's not all up front, and we capture it on the backside when they're establishing this stuff and going here. Yeah. So the state does have a program. It's called the Vacant Storefronts Districts, which will give you up to. We'll give tenants, not property owners, yes. tenants, yes. up to $10,000 uh, in tax credits. 
No, that I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Arlington. Oh, yes, you gotta, you gotta put up. I mean, my my economic development budget is zero. I no, I. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no not, not your budget. I'm talking about talking to the town and say, look, we want to. We're serious about encouraging new businesses here, and in school, we we'll designate certain areas, saying this you know, a lot of old stock, and in uh, some of the years we want to encourage them to go in here. We might give a tax break for the first four to five years, so so that the cost that they incur to fit up their space can be compensated for that because it's old space. So now you can get rid of that excuse it's old space. Yeah, but you can make a new space by, by this uh, break here. Uh, we're going to try to follow that a little bit because I know that doing that in Boston right now, some of the... Uh, that might be a good conversation for us to bring up when we have our joint meeting with the select board. Oh, yeah. So maybe I can yeah. pin that one for okay. for that. Yeah, I would I would definitely be curious, given that the tax rate was dropped for this next fiscal year. I'd be curious to see if that would stimulate any projects by any existing commercial uh, property owners. I'm just thinking of ways that we can stimulate things. Absolutely. And make them going. I mean, I can't make spaces bigger. No. <laughs> but we can we can make it easier for someone to fit out of the space, right? Absolutely. Um, and then, so what is exactly your role in signage? So if if there's been a sign that's been on an empty storefront for a long time, so would you have the ability to say, hey, landlord, take that sign down? Yeah, so I review all sign permits that come through. No, that's not a sign permit, though. And then when the vacant storefront bylaw comes into the effect, into effect, what I can do is when I enforce the bylaw and give them their fine, I can also say you also have non-conforming signage and ask them to remove any non-conforming signage, which under vacant storefronts would include any businesses that are no longer in operation. Thank you. I think it's Archie Pepe. Uh, yes, I did. See. Katie, Katie knows. She hears me. Okay. <laughs> it's one of my pet peeves to today. Uh, I understand. And, uh, and seeing a, a overabundance of signs. You know, they pass up this vinyl stuff all over the windows. Uh, just, it's not good for other businesses in the neighborhood. Correct. Yes. Right. Uh, that's all. Uh, uh, thank you. That was a very good. And uh, let us know if we can help to work together and get things better. I'm here anytime. <laughs> well, thanks, Katie. I just had one um, thing to add, which might be something we all think about as we're um, moving into the rezoning um, thoughts for Arlington Heights ahead of 2025 town meeting, which is, you know, if we've heard that commercial space is too small, as we're working on the, the zoning, you know, for an Arlington Heights business district, are there any incentives or any, um, any, any, any way that we can incentivize the creation of some of these larger, um, larger square footage commercial spaces through the way that we zone, um, Arlington Heights because so often we see even in some of these larger new developments um, these developers and landlords cutting things up into these 1500 2500 square foot at best um, spaces which to, to Katie's point really aren't large enough for you know a higher end restaurant a, um, large retail space um, you know, some of these other uses and so I think it would be I, I'd love to you know work with Katie and, and really try to think about how we could build some of those goals into what we do in Arlington okay. Heights as a potential um, test case for what we do throughout some of the other business districts in town. Yeah, excellent idea. I think one of them is parking. Um, um, either by Reducing the required parking so that, so that they can have more space, or have the town designate uh, parking parking areas, uh, middle 
of the town right now, we have this huge parking field, which, which provides parking for all our businesses there. Do we have any of that stuff in here? Should we really encourage businesses? We maybe take over a property and say this is a town parking meters or whatever that encourage parking around there. Or just have less parking. Yep, definitely. And again, that'll be a big discussion in our select board meeting too. So, yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, one uh, thing that I, I, I would like to talk to the select board about that yes. related to parking. Uh, we've had a fairly successful parking benefits district program in Arlington Center. Um, I would, you know, I'd like to see us have a conversation about whether that would make sense in the Heights or Capitol Square. Okay. We, I, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I did pose that question in the Envision Arlington survey because, um, the Parking Benefits District has brought in, uh, has created great pots of, of funding, which has then funded like the planters in the center, and it's going to help with the Russell Common parking lot renovation. And the answer was no, at least from residents. <laughs> they don't want to see meters in uh, Capitol Square or the Heights, but uh, that was just. The Envision Arlington survey. There's, I mean, I, I think there is a sales pitch. There's um, absolutely a sales because, pitch because I mean, the whole I if you are if you do a, a meter pricing program well, the idea is that you have approximately 85 percent occupancy at any given time, so that when someone pulls up, there is a space there, and you know the, those high, you know those high value spaces that are right in front of a, a business, there's always something available, so you don't have cruising, you don't have someone taking up the space all day. And you know, it, it just works better. Yeah, purely um, purely talking about planters and, and got like just beautification for plants. Oh yeah. In in Capitol Square, I often hear from the business owners that the the beds are totally totally neglected, and DPW never um, you know takes as as good care of them. And then meanwhile, in the Heights, <coughs> the community association has totally gotten together and has privately funded all of the little planters. So. It's, it's total grassroots efforts, but a parking benefits district would just take care of that like it does in the center. Or they could do Where a business you? improvement district in the Heights and then have the businesses do a little bit more. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for yes, having such thank an you. interesting thank discussion. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Katie. Thank you, Katie. All right, uh, that closes agenda item number three. We'll now turn to agenda item number four, which is the ALY free development discussion. Um, we will have a brief discussion regarding the potential redevelopment of the ALY MBTA T stop. And Sarah, I will turn it over to you to introduce this topic. Um, yes, so there is a um, notice of intent um, that was issued by MassDOT Essentially, they're proposing to um, get a joint partnership um, with a private developer to look at redeveloping the Alewife Brook, um, excuse me, the Alewife um, tea station and the garage. Um, so we have recently been notified of it. Um, I don't have a whole lot of details other than um, the notice that was issued but there's going to be joint collaborations between the communities um, and as we get more information we will definitely provide it to the board and to the public um, but it's something exciting that is coming forward and you know arlington residents do have a place i think the board has a place to participate in conversations about this as it will directly impact us Thank you, Sarah. So, um, any thoughts, starting with Steve? Um, speaking for myself as a East Arlington resident, first of all, I am super excited about this. Um, Cambridge, you know, they, they've, Cambridge has done, spent a lot of time looking at the Elway area. They've done their climate change vulnerability assessment in 2015. In 2017, they did a resiliency handbook for the Elway district, and then they did a master plan in 2019. The master plan is really impressive. It, they've managed to take that area of Cambridge and add more businesses, more housing, and more green space. And I mean, what they're, at least what the plan envisions is really cool. 
um, having a, um, I, I think this in combination with some of the significant owners in the uh, in the quadrangle area might help to kickstart this. But ultimately, you know, for you know, I, I understand that why the T is. I think I understand why the T is proposing this. They have a garage that needs that would cost them 155 million dollars to rebuild, and they do not have it. It would cost them $55 million over 10 years to maintain as is, which they really don't have. And so, I mean, working with a private partnership to do a air rights, a long-term air rights lease, I, I think that's, um, you know, it's, it is a creative way for them to, you know, kind of get their needs um, and meet their expenses, you know, because the state really hasn't been forthcoming in that. But it's very early on in this. We don't have no idea what's going to happen. Um, they're just starting this conversation, but I'm, I, I think it's an exciting, I, I'm excited about the possibilities. Great. Thank you, Steve. Gene? Yeah, I had asked that this be on the agenda so we could have a discussion about it and about what role, if anything, we should think about playing, whether it's just um, having a conversation with the select board about it, whether it's talking to Claire. Um, talking to elected officials. Um, it, it's sort of amazing to me that a 40-year-old garage is falling apart. You know, They don't build things the way they used to, I think is one thing to say about that. But it's, not, it's much more than just redoing the garage. Mm -hmm. This is potentially that entire rail yard as, as part of this. So it's going to be a very, very large development. And while it can be very good, in a lot of ways, I think there are at least two ways that it could have a really detrimental impact on Arlington. And I think we need to figure out, do we play a role? Do we try to influence the T? And, and one way is um, CSOs going into El Life Brook. That area is mostly combined sewer. And the CSOs from um, Cambridge regularly go off. In fact, I think they went off three times in the last two days, discharging raw sewage into El Life Brook. And this could mean a really big increase in sewage going into El Life Brook. And as you probably know, the brook often overflows its banks um, into the DCR reservation and into the pathway, and it makes the brook really not usable for recreational purposes for days afterward. So I think one issue that we need to figure out what to do about is, is the big potential to increase the pollution and the flooding, by the way, of the brook. And, and the other issue is traffic. And it's not clear to me what can be done about the traffic because those intersections are already, I think, you know, way over capacity and F. But it's hard for me to see how they could even put in a lot more without figuring out what to do about the entire roadway yeah. network there. Um, I mean, there are some things like when that area was first designed in, I think, the early 80s, there was supposed to be a flyover lane which was never built, but I'm not sure the flyover lane would have gone in the right direction because, you know, if you go down LF Brook Parkway, it's too crowded. If you go the other way, it's crowded. Mass Ave is crowded. But if there were one onto Route 2 West, that would... So there are some things that could be thought about. So I think, I think the town needs to connect with the T early so that what's what they're going to put out and what um, they're asking for takes into account the CSOs and the pollution and traffic. And um, I don't know how the town goes about doing that, but I think it's essential that the town connect. And, and somewhere in this, it said they might create a stakeholder group. Might isn't enough. They really need a stakeholder group. And the town should be one of the stakeholders. And I think that's one of the things that the town should clearly be saying to the T right now. These are going to have significant impacts 
on the town and there needs to be a stakeholder group. We need to be um, one of the stakeholders. The, the only other thing I will add is, um, you know, there is this group in Arlington that would like to try to get the T to look at extending the red line and we clearly wouldn't want anything done here that would make that more difficult or prevent that from happening in the future. Not that it's going to happen in the next few years, but so that's the third thing. So I think the town has a real role to play. I'm not sure if it's planning, I'm not sure if it's us, I'm not sure if it's select board, but I think when we meet with the select board, maybe this can be an item on the agenda to discuss with them. So that could be something too that um, I could certainly bring up with the town manager as well um, yeah. and see if between Jim and, and Claire we can come up with um, the best outreach strategy going forward too. The traffic is, is a little challenging. Cambridge's master plan estimates estimates that 82% of the traffic through the LWIF region is through traffic. It mm -hmm. either starts there or stops there. So. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, you know, that, that area that we're looking at on the screen, it's, you know, that's bigger than any single community around there, and it, um, you know, it's really more of a mass DOT issue, but... Well, you, but that is what, a person that, that's yeah. a group that needs to come to the table, yes. too. Yes. 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 Great. Yes. Um, the environmental, though, Jane, actually may be an interesting possible uh, potential. Um, or possibility that the town could bring to the team and you know, say we have these overflows. Um, there are currently already uh, these detrim detrimental events happening and, and we want a developer to improve the situation. Not only, not only um, do we want a developer to not make it worse, but, but what can they do to mitigate existing conditions? Um, or, or this is going to be a lot of potential tax money for Cambridge, which they could use to do sewer separation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and some storage and things like yeah. that that would mitigate. So either the developer or anticipation of taxes that Cambridge could do tax anticipatory bonding, things yep. like that. So there's so many things that, that they could do if they wanted to. I, I think it's really exciting. I spend a lot of time in that area and it's dead. I mean, it's, it's crumbling concrete now. It's, it's really exciting that they can. Yeah, the garage um, has been falling <laughs> apart for a long time. No. Well, and it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's empty. It's empty space, and um, what has the potential to be a real neighborhood? It it, it hollows out um, space in between in between the two communities. I think it's well, really you know, exciting. also, I mean, it all used to be a wetland, and another thing right. to think about is, you know, they did this wonderful artificial wetland over in one side. Mm -hmm. The advantage of using some of the extra space for another artificial wetland, it's another way to deal with storm water and things like that so the possibilities are endless and and what we see here doesn't say what it is but i think the town has a real opportunity to sort of get its voice heard in a good way i think the challenge is um how to get that quickly incorporated into the rfp yep um because the rfp it says indicates will be coming out in uh late summer which not too not too far away right. so um, again I think uh, reaching out to those folks who have ties within city of Cambridge here within Arlington um, and the MBTA which you know we know that um, the department is already in, in contact with sooner rather than later is um, absolutely is really important. I think you guys have all great ideas. I think we just got to figure out how do we leverage uh, these ideas and get, uh, get you know, some of the agendas on their agenda. And uh, I think we need a concerted effort from the town, either through the select board, uh, through human development, redevelopment board, somebody that has more, that can spearhead that. 
just stay focused on that. Because it's not going to be a one day thing. It's going to be a it's going to be kind of tedious, but we're going to have to go after them and figure out who's the one that's going to do that. And who do we have to contact? You know, do we talk to the governor? Do we talk to you know, the WTA? I mean, you know, Cambridge is friendly, but then they're going to look at their agenda first. And they might not follow our, what we want to do. Well, let's start the conversation. So yeah. we'll, we'll see if we can get that kick started here in town. Anything else? All right, I'm sure this will be a future um, agenda item as well as the RFP begins to take shape and as well as the uh, developer selection. All right, that closes agenda item number four and we'll now move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. So any member of the public here with us this evening who'd like to speak, uh, please let us know by raising your hand. Um, as uh, Kristen Anderson comes to the uh, front, I'd just like to remind everyone, please introduce yourself first, last name, and address, and then you'll have up to three minutes to address the board. Uh, thank you. My name is Kristen Anderson. I live at 12 Upland Road West, and I'm a member of Save the Elwife Brook. Last year, 27 million gallons of untreated sewage was dumped into Alewife Brook. In 2021, 51 million gallons. 51 million gallons of untreated sewage was dumped into the brook. It's a densely populated area. 5,000 people live within the Alewife's 100-year floodplain, and there are multiple environmental justice neighbors, neighborhoods along the brook. Last year, the brook flooded over its bank five times, sending untreated sewage flood water into the DCR State Park and into the Elwife Greenway. We saw children riding bikes through untreated sewage flood water. We saw joggers running through it, and we saw parents pushing baby strollers through it. The situation is so bad, it is absolutely horrifying. People shouldn't have to be exposed to sewage when they are trying to get to the tea. They shouldn't have to have untreated sewage in their parks, yards, and homes. And climate change, with its wetter and more furious storms, threatens to exacerbate the problem, making it two to four times as bad as it is now in the alewife in just a couple of decades, unless we see improvements. Several months ago, Save the Alewife Brook, along with the Mystic River Watershed Association, called for an end to new sewer hookups to the CSOs until the problem is solved. Since then, the Commonwealth is considering siting a 22-story high-rise just feet away from Cambridge's worst CSO, CAM 401A. Last year, this one CSO discharged over 20 million gallons of untreated sewage. This is just feet away from the circular parking garage that you're talk they're talking about um, redeveloping. Save the Alewife Brook shot footage of that area under sewage flood water late last year. The next closest CSO to the MBTA parking garage is only a few hundred feet away. It is known as MWR 003, and that CSO belongs to the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority. MWRA dumped over a million gallons of untreated sewage from that CSO last year. Where will the sewage from new buildings in the Alewife sub-watershed end up? It will end up in the parks, yards, and homes of Arlington residents, unless there is an end to new sewer hookups pending a solution. And this is not an insurmountable problem. It takes money. But fortunately, we're at a critical point right now where there exists a possibility for investment. Cambridge, Somerville, and MWRA are in the planning stages of a new long-term plan for Alewife CSOs. But they need to deliver a plan that calls for a virtual end to CSOs or a treatment facility for the Alewife. So I ask you all to um, please support an end to untreated sewage pollution in East Arlington. And I also just want to thank, uh, thank you for even discussing this tonight. It's really encouraging. Thank you for all the work you do. We really appreciate it. Uh, anyone else this evening?
Beth Malofchak, 20 Russell Street. I am also a town meeting member. And I came tonight specifically to support my friend and colleague, Kristen Anderson, and save our wife, Brooke. And I want to thank Mr. Benson for including this topic on the agenda. I am shocked and outraged that this uh, situation has been allowed to uh, continue that East Arlington is an open sewer for the benefit of uh, wealthier communities of Cambridge and Somerville. I ask the Redevelopment Board to have one voice in supporting the comments that Ms. Anderson made to not support this development without certain requests, and that is no new connections to the CSOs until uh, they reroute this untreated effluent from polluting our community, our neighbors. It's a public health hazard. It's unacceptable in 2024. And we need to be speaking as one voice from this community to the governor, to MWRA, to Mass DOT, to Philip Ang. I feel very strongly about this, and I hope that that you will take to heart the work that that Kristen and Save Our Life Brook has done and for the betterment of our community, for the public health of our community, and to have a decent green space in what is the DCL property. We'd like to see the brook um, return to a natural state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? All right. Um, so at this time, we will close uh, agenda item number five, which is open forum and uh, open agenda item number six, which is new business. Uh, do you have anything for us this evening? We have no new business for you this evening. All right. Anything else? Steve. I do. Um, I was invited to a, uh, a bill signing tomorrow. Can't go, but tomorrow morning, apparently, the governor will sign the uh, housing bond bill. and. One of the things, I'm still digesting it, but there is one provision that um, will require some changes on our behalf. So the, with what was in the record, what, what is being passed, uh, we won't, Massachusetts will now allow ADUs by right in single family districts without a requirement for owner occupancy in either the main AD, main dwelling or the accessory unit. So that's probably, I think, conflicts a little bit with our bylaw and the requirement to do an affidavit at the time of occupancy. Um, so this is just something to put on the radar that we'll need to tidy up and reconcile. Thank you. We will definitely put that on our 2025 town meeting list. Uh, anyone else? Nothing. All right. Uh, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And adding yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.